I'm Professor Alan Fairlam. You're here today at ISNTD D3, um, the conference looking at drug discovery, development, and diagnostics for tropical diseases. So I'd like to start by saying congratulations for the 10-year anniversary of the Drug Discovery Unit at Dundee. And uh, I was just wondering, how, how has the decade been? Um, what have been some of the challenges and achievements? Um, well, uh, thank you very much for inviting me again. This is the third time I've been to the uh, ISNTD D3 meeting, so it shows I'm, I'm quite keen on, on these meetings. They're very helpful. Yes, we celebrated um, 10 years of drug discovery uh, through the drug discovery unit at uh, the University of Dundee, which was founded by uh, Professor Mike Ferguson and myself, um, largely through frustration with trying to work with um, major pharmaceutical companies where you were always the bottom of their priority list and uh, we kept finding that um, projects were on and then projects were off. And so we thought, well, maybe we could try and fill this discovery gap ourselves by establishing a drug discovery unit. So over the 10 years, we've delivered a preclinical candidate for stage one African trypsomiasis, which has not been developed further. We've delivered um, a very exciting preclinical candidate for malaria last year. We have another candidate for visceral leishmaniasis in, um, in collaboration with GlaxoSmithKline. And of course, as I talked about today, I've also uh, helped to start off a phase 2A proof of concept trial for vexenitazole, which is now in a combination trial with DNDI, and um, also the possibility of repurposing an existing uh, drug for the treatment of um, tuberculosis. So, you know, we've, we've done well. Our next goal is Chagas disease, and we have some promising developments uh, coming on there, but it's still early days. So are you able to um, sort of cover all these areas completely in-house, or do you rely a lot on partnerships as well? You mentioned GSK there. Well, in, in the first five years, we had all the, the models for African sleeping sickness in-house, both um, stage one and uh, stage two disease. And the big change came when we managed to recruit Dr. Kevin Reed to head up um, drug metabolism and pharmacology, and he was an expert on the blood-brain barrier. So that was um, uh, very helpful in trying to drive forward the, the project which, as I say, stalled as a stage one oral treatment. In the ensuing uh, grant uh, support we've had for another five years, the suggestion was that we should become more closely integrated with um, a major pharmaceutical company. And the partner of choice for us was GlaxoSmithKline and it's not a question of they do one thing and we do the other. It is a very tight collaboration at all stages and it has worked extremely well, both I think from the point of view of GSK and from the point of view of the DDU, with exchange of knowledge, technologies, backwards and forwards. We've trained people uh, in Dundee, which have then gone back to the Tres Cantos site to carry out additional studies. So it really has been a very uh, productive and quite successful um, enterprise. That's amazing because there's a lot of talk of partnerships and collaboration, but to actually make it work and translate that into the practicalities is quite an achievement. So well, yeah, it's quite, it's quite a challenge because you, you have to understand the um, the expectations and the limitations um, that constrain pharmaceutical companies in, in what they're able to do uh, in, in um, physical terms. So 
understanding what's required to make a drug is another important thing. And many of the, uh, or the majority of the 85 scientists now in the drug discovery unit have a background from the pharmaceutical industry and therefore they know the expectations that they have to meet in order to convince a major pharmaceutical partner to, uh, to work with them. And of course we have a lot of uh, interest with other pharmaceutical companies as well in other um, disease areas. Okay. Uh, well today's been all about um, hearing lots of um, propositions and projects moving forward towards drug discovery um, for a range of diseases. So when it comes to neglected tropical diseases, has it become any easier? Is it slightly easier to work around the funding or those research collaborations? Or is it just that the challenges have taken on different forms? Hmm. Well, that, that's quite a big question, really. Um, let, let me think about that. So in terms of uh, funding, of course, we are very reliant on the major uh, charities for funding or funding from uh, the uh, PDPs in order to be able to uh, progress, our, progress our work. There's no doubt about it. That is absolutely key. You cannot do the kind of high quality drug discovery that we do on a, on a shoestring. Um, in terms of um, challenges, well, you know, one of the concerns, of course, is that uh, pharmaceutical companies, uh, CEOs, change and therefore their policies change um, with the new CEO. So there's always this question of whether you will have continuity of commitment from your pharmaceutical partners in the long term. And that's something that we work, work very hard on to ensure that it does happen. So bearing all those changes in mind, I guess your personal focus would probably remain with um, the research ongoing um, in the DDU, but um, in a slightly broader sense, well, what do you foresee being the next kind of, the next stage for drug discovery for NTDs, at least in the medium term? You mean in terms of um, intellectual challenges or? Uh, yeah, possibly, or you know, priorities maybe? Um, well, I, I, I think one issue that does come up is um, finding adequate uh, clinical trial sites in order to be able to uh, progress molecules quite quickly. As I say, we've now got three potential um, visceral leishmaniasis candidates, two in collaboration with GSK and uh, delaminate is another possibility. So clearly that requires a lot of infrastructure and uh, funding going to the clinical trial partners. And I think that um, one of the big challenges is going to be as we turn our attention to Chagas disease, we don't fully understand the pathogenesis of the disease, we don't have um, perfect animal models at the moment to predict whether the compounds we make are really going to translate into from an animal model into the human disease situation. So of course there are a huge number of um, uh, challenges of, of that, that nature. And then of course there are so many other emerging diseases that um, are desperate, in desperate need of uh, better therapeutics. And if you had kind of one advocacy message to send out for, in terms of drug discovery for these neglected diseases, um, what would you want to say? To I, I think I'd like to say that um, uh, the, the new paradigm, we are making uh, significant progress and it takes time to see those translations from the laboratory bench right through into the clinic and we mustn't therefore um, lose heart or lose enthusiasm uh, as we move forward. 
Well, Professor Fairlam, we look forward to hearing more from the Drug Discovery Unit at Dundee and hopefully seeing you again soon. And thank you very much for your thoughts and for your time today. Thank you.